Welcome back to another reaction video. Daniel Johnson from the Dutch office uh, here. Always joining me, my buddy Sean Shields from the, the Atlanta office. Hey, Sean, waving to the folks. So we've got some veterans in the hot seat for our reaction video today. Uh, I will let them do their introductions. We'll start with ladies first. Evelyn. Thank you. Uh, I'm Evelyn Oreskovich from Her Consulting, and um, I specialize in working with hotel groups and service providers to uh, make sure that you are selecting the right vendors and um, helping your implementations go as smoothly as possible to get the best return on investment. Fantastic. Glad to have you. Glad to see you. Glad you're doing well. Also joining us uh, from uh, this side of the Atlantic, Alan, tell us about yourself. Hey, Daniel. Yep, I'm in London. Um, Alan from Apaleo. Um, I'm co-founder of Apaleo, and Apaleo is essentially a an open software platform for hotels with um, with a PMS and integrated payment, and then what we like to term an API first approach, which basically makes it as easy as it ever has been to connect third party applications into that platform very, very seamlessly for an amazing guest user, ex uh, an amazing user experience. Fantastic. Well, always glad to see you both and I appreciate you volunteering to uh, give us your re reaction. So what, as you know, what the next step is, uh, Sean's going to share something and then we'll take, uh, take a glance at what, what's uh, on the screen and then we'll, uh, and we'll, I'll ask you a question. All right. Can you see that I can on my screen? Yeah. Uh -huh. So this is, uh, um, you know, event magazine, I guess they're, they're part of Skift now. We always love to go to Skift for, for their, their content, fantastic source. Um, the impact on small businesses from all the canceled trade shows. So this is a uh, um, this is a look at how so much B two B business is done on trade shows. Like one of the uh, uh, surveys they had in their B two B enterprises, um, uh, over uh, over twenty five percent of them budget fifty percent or more on face to face on live events, trade shows. Uh, trade shows a huge part of Venza's uh, uh, outreach. Um, I'm not going to ask you both what your marketing budgets are, but um, I'm curious, even if it isn't from your your personal organization, what do you suspect will be the uh, for for the the interactions between hoteliers and the vendors? Where do you think people will uh, will meet and make uh, make new connections? It's one thing to farm those old connections you've had, as I think many have done mm -hmm. for the last few months. But how do people meet one another? The hoteliers need will will need great uh, solutions. Vendors need to you know find that find the marketplace. So, what what are your thoughts on this one? Mm -hmm. uh, Alan, you're, 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 uh, I hear some, some, uh, um, you know, you're, you're, you, what do you, what do you think? What do you, let's, why don't you, oh, why don't there's you a lot to unpick here, right? I mean, yeah. and you know, I can, I can speak about this from a very personal perspective when I think yeah. about Apaleo because we are a small business right now. And, um, but I think, you know, I also think about the, the wider impact on the industry as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I, I fundamentally agree with the, um, you know, with the the assertion that is being made here. I mean, uh, if I look at it from our perspective, we've missed out on significant events in the industry like ITB, yeah. uh, World Travel Market, which was due to be happening in um, November, is not happening. Uh, smaller events like um, uh, the um, what's it called, <laughs> the IHTF, uh, High Tech Europe, um, High Tech, of course, and some of I these did. have been replaced by virtual events, and I've oh. attended a couple of those, and quite frankly, they're, they are difficult, really. I mean, it's very difficult to achieve the same goals um, in a virtual networking room, something like yeah. that, or if yeah. you have a virtual exhibitor's booth, um, because essentially we all know, right, when we're on the other side of, of a Zoom camera, if we're not actively engaged, we're probably making a cup of tea or we're you know, checking <laughs> our emails, whereas yeah. actually when you're there in that physical environment, um, you're just the engagement is so much greater. Um, so I, I, I mourn the loss of um, physical events 
Uh, absolutely, and it, it is a difficult one to replace. Having said that, you know what I would say is that the world has adopted pretty quickly, and um, just even this this very um, this very uh, event that or not event, but this this video that we're recording right now is is another method by which to get your to to get your yourself out there to remind yep. people of your brand. Perhaps not this one because we're talking about relatively neutral stuff, but a lot of webinars have happened over the past mm -hmm. six or seven months, for example. And, you know, we've seen direct leads which have converted into business coming in off those webinars. So where there's a will, there's a way. Um, but I think for small businesses, it's really just trying to to find alternative methods by which to promote your brand and keep your and make yourself relevant and yeah. continue to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've been doing these reaction videos well before the pandemic, so we must be really ahead of the game. Who knows? <laughs> the first time in my life. There you yeah. go. Evelyn, what do you, what do you think? What do you, well, what are I your don't thoughts? Have, yeah, I don't have a whole lot to add from what Alan said. I mean, it's really been a huge loss, especially high tech for yeah. here. Um, yeah. um, the virtual uh, events, I agree with Alan, they are very, very difficult. Um, the smaller players really don't get as much face time as, uh, as, as the established ones. And that yeah. makes a, uh, it, it puts a real dent in them really kind of being able to, you know, make waves in the industry and cause some disruption in the old, yeah. the old model. Um, mm -hmm. In some places, you see some live events beginning to come back on a socially distanced environment, and that's a good sign. But, you know, until this thing starts stabilizing around the world, we're really not going to see yeah. the um, these kinds of things again. Because even in a smaller socially distanced environment, you're not be, you're not able to get, obviously, as many people uh, there and as many vendors to choose from. And for a lot of the clients, clients that I talk to who are looking for new vendors, it's hard to find these new vendors when the big boys kind of are just, you know, monopolizing the marketplace at the moment. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, people are getting creative. Obviously, the, yeah. the, the solicitation on LinkedIn is like kind of getting to a point of ridiculousness, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Because so many... You know, cold calling, uh, cold emailing, and 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 whether or not the, the the people that you're targeting are either in the market or interested in your type of product, um, yeah. and so it's it's almost been, um, I th I think it's counterintuitive because it's making people distrust the in mails that you get from LinkedIn, yeah. um, because they aren't really targeted, and so. That's a little bit discouraging because then when mm -hmm. we want to use it for a legitimate purpose, people are going to be a little bit more skeptical. Yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. but I think it's going to be a while before we start seeing these big high tech and world travel market and ITB events again, which is yeah. sad, very sad for the industry and very sad yeah. for a lot of the small businesses, especially. Yeah. I mean, I know personally we, we had a, we had a webinar yesterday. We, we, we've done webinars for years, but I think we have, there has been an uptick in the, 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 the number of webinars we've had slightly. And then we've had, um, you know, I've, I'm reaching out via LinkedIn to my contacts to say, hey, think about going to the webinar. And I hate to think that that my, you know, um, my manual, you know, reach out to people is uh, is just going into into the category of, uh, you know, spam filter and kind of in. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, so I think there's, I see that saturation with that that platform uh, alone. It's one of the well, it's it's one of the, the only old, channels that's available right now. Yeah, and it's the old rule of you know a couple of people are are ruining it for everybody else because they're not properly um, uh, vetting who they're yeah. sending emails to. I'm get, yeah. getting emails from people who think I'm a hotel. If you look at my profile, you know I'm not a hotel. Um, yeah. You know, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's like um, you know. A handful of people are ruining it for everybody because LinkedIn, you know, has always been a very good and trusted tool yep. for reaching out to business contacts and really expanding your circle. And um, that's unfortunately uh, being ruined. It's kind of buckling under the weight from all the attention that, uh, yeah, because it's for sure there aren't yeah. there aren't very many options out there. Very but cool. It's, it's tricky right now, though, right? Because um, I mean, there's an event organizer that I was talking to just yesterday who's got a big event coming up in um, in the UK, normally about 400 people 
in a conference uh, venue together and yeah. um, gala dinner overnight stay all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. and they've 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 initially said that they in order to support the industry and demonstrate to the industry that it is possible to you know that, that we we should be forging ahead and having live events where we can they decided to make that a live stroke hybrid event so that they would have a n- number of delegates who would be on site and then and then another set of delegates who would be in on a virtual basis but of course over here in the uk the government recently introduced tighter restrictions on numbers of people that can gather it's now 30 people so they're they're almost certainly going to have to go full hybrid with only three or four weeks to the event um, so it's, yeah. it's just it's it's really difficult for everybody concerned not just those of us who want to be there as vendors not the hoteliers who want to come and learn more but also the actual organizers have a real a real nightmare to end with right now. Yeah. 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 SDR did a really good job of that last month when they did their annual conference. Um, and they had about a hundred people on site and then they streamed uh, streamed it to the rest of the attendees. And that wasn't bad. Um, but again, the interactive, the networking, the you know, all of that stuff just still lacks. It's it's not the same. Yeah. I did one uh, back, this was probably back in April or May, one of these virtual conferences. And every time I would drop out of the conference hall or the, the seminar room and into the networking room, nobody else in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, it's difficult. I don't blame the organizers for that. It's just human nature. No. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, we'll see. We've got high tech at the end of this month. Um, and so... Uh, well, this and we've got. Well, there's also what in two weeks there's Biotech. So not to name drop all the different events that we're in, but they're all virtual, and we'll, we'll yeah. we've got we got our fingers crossed that that we'll have substantive conversations in them. Yeah, so. I mean, on on the on the good side, it's making you all be very creative. And, you know, mm-hmm. as a vendor, you have to be really creative to get people to come to your yeah. session. So it's it's doing that, um, and then hopefully when we can all meet again in person, maybe we'll find a more creative um, uh, approach to the live trade show environment, and yeah. th- that'll be fun to see. That'll yeah, be fun. that's a that's a good point actually. I think we're forced to consider how we can be relevant, and mm-hmm. um, and as a result, the quality of the content that we're pushing out. Um, certainly, I think in our case, the quality of our content, content has improved dramatically since COVID that mm-hmm. we're pushing out yeah. because yeah. because there's always that awareness that, you know, if you're going to catch people's attention in a virtual world, you've really got to be relevant and concise and to the point. Yeah. Exactly. It can't be just some brightly colored tchotchke that you hand out at a trade show to get their attention. It's got to be Absolutely. something that's going to end up in the rubbish bin anyway. And that's, <laughs> that's right. You're such a pessimist. <laughs> Either that or in the kid's toy box, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but I think that I think that that's true. It has made people be a lot more um, respectful of the time that your that your uh, uh, the people that you're engaging with have, and so people have been a little less marketer and a yeah. lot more sort of direct. Here's what I have for you. Here's what's going to do for you period end of story and without the song and dance so yeah. do we miss the song and dance i don't uh some people do some people like that fluff you know but um but it'll be really interesting to see what happens when we all come back yeah so, aside from the smoking parties because people are going to be so happy <laughs> to be able to hug again you know and and, and have a drink yeah, and, yeah uh, that's right yeah and have those yeah. parties legally yes exactly <laughs> Exactly. Very great. Love our conversation. Thank you both for taking time. And uh, um, any parting comments, Mr. Sean Shields? I'm just imagining LinkedIn as kind of the Dust Bowl or Civil War time carpet baggers, digital carpet baggers going around. Hey, you got any work? You got any work? Can I sell you this? I'm still selling this. Yeah. yeah. That is not a dystopian yeah. future. That's what's happening right now exactly right now, exactly, yeah. exactly. So. Well, very good well thank you everybody for tuning in for another reaction video and we will see you next time